welcome back to my channel and welcome to a new series here on my channel and I really really hope that this series is helpful to you guys and what this series is basically going to be about is going to be just a bunch of tips and tricks and information and just literally everything that you can think about about surgery. I know that on my channel I posted my experience and my recovery process but in those videos I did not show and I did not answer a lot of questions that you guys may have so this series is going to be a little bit more in depth into things specify more on things like how to treat your scar post-op how to snatch your waist even more post-op the things that you need fajas literally everything that you guys need to know about post-op care I am going to be doing you know separate videos and showing you guys and teaching you what my tips and tricks are. So I really hope that this series is going to be helpful for you guys. I know that when I was getting a BBL and a breast augmentation and a tummy tuck, I had no idea what to buy. I had no idea what I needed. I had no idea what the recovery process was. I had no idea for the post-op care. There was no videos on YouTube when I, start, when I started this whole journey. So I really hope that my videos are helpful for you guys so with that being said I did go ahead and ask you guys on Instagram what you guys wanted to see for today's first video and literally so many people requested the must-haves for a BBL recovery so that's what we're gonna be talking about today everything that I used I have literally everything right here you can see a little bit of it right there um, I have so many things that I need to show you guys along with Fajas. We're going to be talking about Fajas because that was a huge topic on my last video and I got so many questions about Fajas so we're going to be talking about must-haves and Fajas for today's video. So if you guys are interested in seeing what you guys need post-op, just keep on watching. Alright guys, so we're taking it back to fucking a year ago. I got my first surgery a year ago in April 27 of 2018. So it's been a whole year since I got my first surgery. If you guys are new to my channel, I had already two. So the last one was in April. My recent one was in December. For my first surgery, I got a tummy tuck and 360 BBL. If you guys are new to my channel and you didn't see my previous videos, I actually do not have any children. But I was very, very overweight before. I started losing pounds. I lost about 45 to 50 pounds. So I did have a lot of excess skin and that is the reason why I got the tummy tuck. And also because I wanted my waist to be like extra snatched. <laughs> but for the first round, that's what I did. My second round, I went ahead and did another round of BBL because you know, I wanted the booty to be huge. I wasn't going too much for a small waist. I was going more for like a huge ass. <laughs> So the second round, I did get a BBL and a breast augmentation. So I am going to go in depth on how to take care of your scars and all that good stuff. But for now, I'm going to be showing you guys what I needed for both surgeries. You guys did see a lot of this on my recovery videos, but you guys are going to need diapers. <laughs> I know it's so crazy like I mentioned in my other video this is not to pee yourself this is not to fucking you know like your bladder is crazy and you're just gonna piss on yourself but no this is just for sanitation so if you guys didn't know when you get a BBL there is so 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 much drainage so I did have to have diapers for the drains so I didn't have to have my chair like you know soaked in nasty stuff so I do recommend diapers I didn't even know I still had these. This was for my first surgery and I went to the store and bought another pack on my second round. But yeah, this is from my first surgery and I'm going to show you guys. So what you guys want to do is buy like a large or extra large underwear because you guys, you are so swollen and freaking gross when you come out. So I did have to buy... This is a large, my second round, my ass was going to be bigger, so I bought an extra large. But this is how they look, you guys. <laughs> Goals. So, yeah, I had to wear these. Oh, I remember these. These were for my first surgery. <laughs> these are the diapers that I would wear every single day for like a week and a half. Now, this was so important to wear because you didn't get dirty. You weren't leaking everywhere. So, I really do recommend you guys getting these so these are the large let me show you guys the extra large i bought these at like the store brand these are actually the always oh my god oh 
my god, I still have my prescription, you guys. Oh my god, it was inside the diaper pad. It's Ayana. Oh my god. Okay, guys. So these are the extra large. These are like, damn, they're fucking huge. God. They're huge. But uh, yeah, the large and the extra large. The second round, my ass was like gigantic, so I needed an extra large. But yeah, you guys, these freaking diapers were the love of my life for a little. Another very, very important one, and I actually used this for my entire recovery for a month, and that is under pads. So this is to put on your bed if you're only getting a BBL and you're able to lay down. I unfortunately, both rounds, I wasn't allowed to sleep in my bed for a month. I had to sit in a chair and sleep in a chair for a month. I put these all over my chair just to make sure that my chair was super clean and I wasn't gonna be draining all over them. So this is really, really important. And these are our under pads. And I got them in the size large. They literally look like dog pads, guys. So these are crucial. You guys are definitely gonna need these for your recovery. You wanna put them all over your bed and all over your chair if you got a tummy tuck and a BBL. Uh, yeah, they're super, super big and you have these just laying on the bottom of you so you don't have anything, you know, draining all over the place. And also I kept them for like sanitation. These, the pads, the diapers were literally very, very crucial. So you guys do need them. You don't need more than one pack because I went crazy and bought two. So definitely not more than one. I think you should be good with one. Also something that was super important in my recovery was these huge pads right here. You wanna get the overnight like extra, extra big ones. I use these pads for so, so, so many things. One was to cover my lipo holes. I would uh, cut the pad open. Look, you guys, this thing is like gigantic. Like it's huge. But um, I would cut the pad, and since it's an extra hold pad, it would be able to, you know, hold all the drainage that you're getting through your lipo holes. So I would cut a little piece and then I would tape them everywhere where I had my lipo holes. So this was really, really important in my recovery as well to keep, you know, sanitation and the drainage getting everywhere. I put some on my bottom where I had, you know, closer to your private area. I had three lipo holes there. So I always had a pad there sustaining it from, you know, dripping all the way down. My mom would actually change these little pads every three hours because I was draining so much on my first round. Not so much the second round, but the first round definitely a lot of leakage. So this was used very often. And if you guys are getting lipo, please make sure to be keeping your holes clean at all times and making sure that you change these constantly don't be letting it you know overflow like try to take them off every three hours or every two kind of like if you were to change them on your period we're gonna get back to this pad because this pad did so much for me but for now we're gonna keep it moving they also are gonna give you a prescription as you guys saw with like a huge list of medicine, antibiotics, anti-inflammatory, all that stuff. So if I don't have the things, I'm gonna be posting the pictures of it like right here. Another thing that is very, very important was compression socks. I did not know that this was gonna be such a big deal. Like what the fuck, like what are socks supposed to do? But honestly, it is super, super important to have compression socks. If you are able to wear them for like a month, that is great. Especially if you guys are getting a tummy tuck. The first time around, I am gonna be posting like a little clip of it right here. My legs the first round with the tummy tuck were insanely swollen. It was it was literally a lot worse than pregnant feet. Like it was so, 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 so bad. The swelling was insane and I didn't have any compression socks. So I what I had to do was wrap bandages over my legs and that helped. And also if you have a lot of swelling in your legs, make sure that your legs are always elevated at all times. That is very important because or else you can have you know, blood clots and really bad complications with that. So compression socks are super crucial in the recovery, you guys. Something that was not in the prescription or even told that I needed it and it was super important was scar wash or like wound wash. 
For my first surgery, I got a tummy tuck, so I didn't think that, you know, washing it was going to be enough. So I did tell my mom, I was like, mom, I think we need to wash the wound with something. Like, we cannot just be, you know, washing it with fucking water and soap. Like, no, like there needs to be something to keep it more sterile and more sanitized. So what I did, I went to CVS. Well, my boyfriend went to CVS and he got this little pack of like wound wash. And it's supposed to, you know, clean out the wound, stabilize the pH levels on it, and just keep it sanitized and, you know, bacteria, kill the bacteria, whatever you need. Because something that I was very always afraid of was to get an infection, you guys. Like, I was so scared to get an infection because that is, like, the number one reason why people will pass away after a surgery is because of an, of an infection and I was so scared that I was like no I need to take precautions I need to do everything that I need to do to keep it clean and make sure everything's gonna be fine so I am gonna be posting a picture of it and it came with like tweezers gloves gauze pads all that stuff so I'm gonna be showing it to you guys if I could find it on the CVS website I did use that to wash my lipo holes and my tummy tuck scar you guys are able to get the one that, that I'm gonna be posting right here here in the US is from CVS but if you guys are getting all your prescription from Mexico I'm going to be posting a picture right here of the one that I bought in Mexico my second round and that was just like a spray so I would spray it on me all the time when my mom would all the time to keep everything very sanitized and then for another thing that you guys are definitely going to need is a lot a lot a lot a lot of gauze pads I spent probably like $50 on just gauze pads because they're so important you guys you do not want to wipe your wounds with cotton paper toilet, I mean toilet paper, <laughs> with toilet paper, towels, tissue, like you do not want to wipe your stuff with any of that stuff. That is, that contains so much bacteria, so much fuzz. No, 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 no. You want to use gauze pads. So every time I would wash my wounds, I would go ahead and clean them off with gauze pads. Make sure your wounds are never wet. That is super important from the re the recovery of your wounds to never for them to never be moist, wet, anything like that. So every time I would go take a shower, wash them, always wipe them down with the gauze pads. So also if you guys didn't know for my second round, I did get a tummy tuck revision. I did explain on to why I did that on my last video and if you guys are interested in knowing why I did that, you guys can go ahead and check that out. But the first time around, I did not take care of my scar the way that I should have. So the second round, I did a lot of research. I was kind of more informed and kind of knew what I had to do from the first one. So something that I really, really recommend you guys is to always keep surgical tape on your scar as long as possible. I mentioned on my last video that I did have surgical tape on my scar for about two months and that just keeps your scar from moving around because your scar will kind of like you know tilt or try to move around if you don't keep it compressed so i did have this time around i fucking love my scar because it's so perfect so clean so tiny so light it's not dark at all so i do recommend you guys keeping surgical tape on it to keep it you know from expanding from moving around uh, getting keloid on your scar so you do want to keep that on your scar as much as possible also make sure that when you take a shower that you dry off the tape before you put on any clothing or your faja all right so this is a very good uh, question that I got here on my Instagram and it said tips for showering safe to use hygiene products so that is a very very good thing i totally forgot about the shower part but something that i did for about three weeks every time that i would shower the first time around as you guys know the first time was hell for me but the second time around it was a lot faster for me to do things something that i do recommend you guys when you first get lipo you get so exhausted you can't keep yourself up the first time that i took off my faja i felt like i was gonna faint so I do recommend you guys taking in a like small chair into the shower. Um, that's what I did for most of the time that I showered. 
was I was always sitting down as I showered but I did not use any you know special things when I was showering everything was just making sure that the soap was completely off and um, yeah like nothing crazy in the shower but I do recommend you guys taking in a chair with you to sit down I feel like that would just make everything a lot easier something that was also very important is for you guys to get hand sanitizer I was very concerned about infections and uh, keeping that shit away from me so just make sure that that anybody that is helping you to always wear latex gloves or always hand sanitizer you guys always 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 hand sanitizer every time you're getting close to your wounds and just stuff like that just make sure that you're always sanitizing your hands also what I do recommend is for you guys to have a lot of pillows I know I don't even have to say that but pillows are super super important in the recovery I, at least for me, as you guys know, I wasn't able to have like a normal BBL recovery just laying on my stomach and on my bed. I actually had to sleep in a big rocking chair and I had to have a lot of pillows on my back to support it. I also used a lot of neck pillows to put them on my waist to kind of give that extra support on my waist. I had a lot of trouble with that uh, for my first and my second procedure. So I recommend you guys use, you know, neck pillows, a lot of soft, fluffy pillows as well. And then also the infamous, infamous, infamous BBL pillow. You guys can definitely get this literally anywhere. I know there's a lot, a lot of companies that make BBL pillows. I got mine from Happy Booty Pillow. I think that's what they're called. I don't know. But I got this and this was literally so expensive. But I am so glad I have it because this is what kept my butt to be huge and not squished and round and cute so uh it was a lot of money it was very expensive i know that they, they have a lot of more inexpensive ones because there's a lot coming out in the market but mine was very expensive and i mean at least i got the use of it for you know two rounds so that's good and i still have it i still use it every day because <laughs> i sit on my chair and i just like to sit on it like it just makes me feel comfortable you put this under your butt and it like keeps you elevated and your butt is not touching the chair anymore. As you, I don't know you guys can't see, but I am a lot higher. And it makes me feel so comfortable. Like it's really uncomfortable in the beginning, but then you get used to it. I stress it enough that keep taking care of your body while you're recovering is crucial with your results, you guys. So be patient and use this. I got a lot of questions about foam boards and I actually did not wear any foam boards at all but I did buy this I don't even know how long after my surgery like I lagged on this so much and I really 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 recommend you guys get this this is this little you know um, pillow foam board little thingy right here it is a very like it looks like it'd be so uncomfortable but it's so 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 comfortable I wear this on my lower back. So this was such a lifesaver and I don't know why I lagged so much to get this. But if you guys are able to buy this before your surgery, it would be a lifesaver. I promise you, your back is in so much pain and this helped me so much. Especially if you guys are laying down after a BBL and a lot of girls do have this problem is where you're laying down and then there's like a big gap in between your back and your butt. And this will literally just, you know, like sit perfectly on your lower back. But yeah, this is so, so, so good. Especially during the recovery. I wish I would have had this sooner. But if you wear this, you know, it will give you more of an arch. Like your body is molding while it's recovering. So I think this would have been perfect on your lower back. So yeah, this is so, 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 so good. I did not wear any ab boards or back boards. Only this little thingy on my lower back. I bought this off of Amazon, so if I end up finding it, I'll let you guys know down in the description box down below. Alright guys, another thing that you guys did see on my previous video was these on my back. As I mentioned, your back gets so, 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 so swollen and nasty. So I did have like too much excess liquid on my lower back. I don't know why I had so much problem with my lower back this time around, but my mom would literally use like five of these place them on top of each other like not on top but like on the sides and make like a big pad and just wrap it around my back and then put my faja on top of it 
And this was just like a really good way to compress. So if you don't want to go out and buy, you know, ab boards or foam boards for your back and your stomach, you can definitely just use like super thick pads, layer them up and then place them and then put your faja over it. And I promise you this works wonders. That's just if, you know, you're trying to save money or you feel like you really don't need them and you could just go ahead and use this. This works amazing. As you guys saw in my previous video, I literally was rocking these pads on my back for like two weeks. <laughs> Alright guys, so that was the first part of the video where I show you guys the things that you guys need for surgery. But now we're going to go into talking about fajas. For the fajas, oh my god, this is literally my number one question everywhere. When you get out of surgery, there is stages on fajas that you're supposed to wear. When you get out of surgery, that is your post-op faja, which is stage one. And this is the one that I had. For your stage one faja, it should always be a very, very silky, very soft, very stretchy material kind of faja. The doctor provided this one, and um, I know that... They provide a free faja when you get a surgery, but then if you want more, you have to buy them. I actually have like four of these because I would have to wear one and then wash the other one and then wear one and it was kind of like that. So um, yeah, I have like a bunch of these, but this is the faja that I had. It is just super soft, very silky. And then from the back, this is how it looks like. It has like the, the holes for your butt. It's like a very meshy material right there it goes down to your thighs and this is a size small so this is the one that i had uh for my post-op so the name of this faja it says marina recovery so this is a post-surgical faja this is not a shaping faja so this is the one that i wore after surgery and i'm going to tell you guys a little story that you need to be very careful when you wear your faja is that i did get burned with my faja you guys are gonna be like what i know i got burned because one of the nurses at the hospital where i was at uh you're supposed to take a shower the day that you leave and they switch you from your faja and she tried to put the faja on me while i was in the bed and i found that really really weird and it's like how am i supposed to be on the bed and get my faja on but anyways i told her i was like that's not gonna be possible i was like can i just stand up but we did it anyway and as she was tying it i don't know what the fuck went wrong but she put the faja on but the faja was like wrinkled at like a certain spot in my stomach and so i had the faja because you're not supposed to take a shower after you leave the hospital for like three days so i had the faja on for like three days straight and when i took it off i had a burn from the faja and it was because it was like you know making my skin like tight or wrinkle up in a certain spot and your skin is super sensitive when you get out of surgery that it just burned me and um it's not that noticeable anymore but i will post a picture of how the burned look like and then how it looks like now it's not even noticeable anymore but it was horrible to get that shit you know because i would have never it, it sucked this is a stage one faja, so make sure you guys buy an extra one if you can. If you can't, well, you know, just make sure to always be wearing this. I switched to my stage two faja a month post-op. A lot of girls come to me and be like, why don't I have your waist? Why don't I look snatched? Why don't I do the... It's like, did you wear your faja? No, I didn't. And it's like... I'm telling you guys, the recovery process is everything on how your body's gonna look like at the end. So if you guys take care of it, this shit is not comfortable. This is not comfortable having to wear this 24 seven, literally sleep with it, shower with it, like everything with it. Like it is not comfortable at all. But this is what snatches you. So for my second round, I did get a breast augmentation and they provided me with this surgical bra. I had to wear this surgical bra for a month and a half and it comes with the strips that squeeze your boobies down and you know keep them compressed down so they go down <laughs> and yeah so this is this is not much to it this, they provided me with this i did not buy this on my own so this is the bra and then i got a lot of questions about this i didn't even think about this faja right here because my second round i did get a uh, lipo on my arms the hospital didn't provide with anything for my arms i know that 
some girls get like an arm faja. I don't know why I did it. I just got wraps around my arm, but that shit was making my arms like deformed. So I was like, no, 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 no. I need to go out and get a arm faja. So I got this one off of Amazon. This faja right here was very, very, very uncomfortable, but you have to wear it, like I said. I wore it for a month, and this is it. It doesn't have anything on the boob area. It's like completely free. It wraps under your boobs, and then it just... It's like a very like spandex material. Yeah, I don't know. But I will leave it down below too if I could find it. I got it off of Amazon for like 20 bucks. Now for the infamous shaping faja. This is the one that I wear, you guys. This is my faja right here. As you guys can see, it is so tiny. Like, what the fuck? How are you even supposed to fit in this? Yeah. You make yourself fit in it, that's how. <laughs> yeah, you guys, like this thing is so tiny. You can switch into your shaping faja one month post-op. And this one, actually, my doctor sells them at his office. And let me see the brand. It is Ann Slim, the original, and I am a size 30. So this faja, as you guys can tell, it will not stretch. Like, it cannot stretch like at all is very 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 firm very thick material it is not breathable material and it's just like super harsh compared to this one like this one is just like flopping this one is like not flopping the back looks like this it's a very very i love this material because it did not squeeze my butt but at the same time this pockets right here is what shaped my butt the way it is now i feel like it just makes it so round and so nice. You guys see that? Yeah, this helped my butt so, so, so much with the shape that I have now. Um, it's just super nice. And then it's such a soft material that my butt is so huge that it literally will, like, it fits it. And the waist is so tiny. So that faja, I still wear every single day. I am six months post-op. I will show you guys. I have it on right here. I have another one because like I said, I like to, you know, switch off. So I wear this faja every single day. I'm planning to use it until I am eight months post-op because that is when I normally start feeling my best. I really do recommend you guys getting like a Colombian faja. It just makes your waist super snatched and your butt looking super round and super good. So yeah, you guys, this is my faja. I know you guys are always asking what fajas I wear. I really hope that this video was informative and helpful. If you guys are planning to get surgery and you needed to know what you guys needed before you you know, go into surgery day and that you have your stuff ready to go once you get out of surgery. That is very important. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys want to see on the next part of this series. I really hope you guys found this informative and helpful to you guys. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click the bell button to get notified every time I upload and to not miss the next part of this series. If you want to be more in contact with me or have any other questions, you can follow me on my social media. I have Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter. I never use Twitter, but Twitter. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I love you so much, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys!